What's up, guys? Uh, this is your boy, Montre. Uh, talking about the Mandela Effect again. I tell you, every time I try to get away from the Mandela Effect, I just live life normally, stuff pops up that I notice, and I'm like, huh? And I'm sure you all are like that, but uh, ever since I've um, got introduced to the Mandela Effect, or the Mandela Effect just kind of crashed on me in like two, 2014, um, ever since then, I mean, yes, I, at first I was just really kind of like, oh my God, look at all this stuff changing. And then I got kind of depressed and then I kind of got used to it because after a while you start realizing that reality is just constantly changing and how boring it must be for everybody else who doesn't notice it. They just live their little mundane lives and they're like, oh, okay. Everything's just the same. Like if you only knew. And you try to tell them, but they don't see it. Anyways, this new one, at least for me, it's new. I realized that we all kind of to we all kind kind of find these Mandela effects at, at different times. So I don't know if it's because I keep shifting to different timelines or different realities where a Mandela effect has been <laughs> known, and I haven't been there to see it. Well, anyways, uh, this one is the B movie. I. Remember this as the B movie. This on this particular picture that I'm showing you, uh, this woman's talking about the B movie. She says she's seen it 357 times. I assume if you've seen a movie 357 times with your child, you pretty much know that the name of the movie is called the B movie. You would not mistake that. Okay, just saying. If I had a kid and I was watching a movie 357 times with them. I would not only hate the movie, but I would know the name of it. So, and I find like with Mandela effects, that tends to be the case. I don't know if I said that in another video. Um, or it's not that you're memorizing things. I did say it, I said it in a live video. It's not that you're memorizing things, it's that you know things by heart. When you know things by heart, you either love it or you hate it. And those are the things that you typically remember because you know them by heart. You either love it or you hate it. <laughs> and so when those things change, you know for a shadow of a doubt, something ain't right. Because you either loved it or you hated it. Uh, I saw the B movie. I didn't like it that much. <laughs> it wasn't the best movie. But anyways, but I do remember it was called the B movie. So let's go on to the internet. Beautiful internet. I'm going to put the B movie. And see what pops up. Oh, look at here. It's called the B movie anymore. And this little funky ass reality is called B movie, which just sounds just kind of weird because we have B rated movies and B movies. So for it to be called B movie just sounds weird. So now it's called B movie when it used to be the B movie. So I asked myself, not just because of the change. Why? What is the reasoning? Um, I've gotten to the point where I really believe that there's an intelligent force behind these changes. You're, you're gonna get on online and you're gonna see people who find Mandela effects in everything, but I don't believe everything's a Mandela effect. At some point, it waters down what the Mandela effect is about and you're gonna have people who have Mandela effects about everything. And it's going to cloud what Mandela effects really are and what misremembering mis things are. You know what I mean? There are moments when we do misremember things and there are truly Mandela effects where we all have a common memory of a certain thing and that shit changes. The B movie is one of those where it was actually the B movie. And I'll find you residuals on that too. But I remember it as the B movie and this other, I, sh I showed you that little article where that woman who saw the movie 357 times remembers it as the B movie. But now it's just B movie. Oh, let me show you the uh, residual I got. If I can find it real quick. Mm, cheese it Singularity page. I think this is it. No, that's not that. We'll get back to that later. 
B movie. All right. All right. Uh, here's the meaning, and I'm gonna talk about that. It's about thinking outside the hive. Whoops. Tell you, I had this propped up, and sorry about that, guys. I dropped my computer. All right, everybody okay? All right, back to what I was saying. Let's get that picture back up. Not that one, that's a 357. All right, the meaning behind the B movie. The whole movie, and I'm always like, why is it that the Mandela effect brings certain things to our attention? It says getting to know the B movie, and then it says B movie characters. The B movie. It, it, you can say, oh, well, they're not really talking about the B movie. They're just talking about this. Uh, they're saying the B movie. But beyond that, the B movie was about the main character stepping outside of the hive, getting out of the hive mind. And that's exactly what we're doing uh, right now, right now in this process. We're all waking up. We're waking up out of the hive mind that's telling us to just do what, it, what we're told and think like everybody else is thinking. If everybody says, no, it's not, then maybe it's not. So there is a certain wake up call. There's awakening happen and that, um, that is making people wake up and step outside of that hive mind. I also want to bring up, oh my, I get so many things pop. I am not, I didn't click it that many times. Let's talk about the Karate Kid, guys. Karate Kid. I'm gonna Google that real quick. Y'all looking at my vision board right now. That's okay. All right. So we already have a few people who have Googled it and it's making news. Uh, the Mandela effect with the Karate Kid bandana. And I, for one, know it was that, that freaking sun. Now it's the lotus flower. I want, I want people not to just look at the difference and say, oh my God, what's going on with the Karate Kid? Why is he wearing a lotus flower on his, on his head? Let's look at the meaning behind it. So let's back up for a second. Meaning behind lotus flower. Okay. Look at this. Check this out, guys. In Padma, it has a special meaning to follow followers of the Hindu religion as it is associated with a number of their deities, particularly Vishnu and Brahma. The lotus in this context is used to represent divine beauty and purity while unfolding its leaves, representing the expanding of the soul and spiritual awakening. This is what the lotus flower means, spiritual awakening. I'm trying to find some more. Oh, here it is. The lotus flower blooms can take original spiritual meaning of ascension, enlightenment, or rebirth. So I've told you before that I don't believe that the Mandela effect is a negative thing if you don't let it be. I believe that the sign of the Karate Kid and his symbol changing from the symbol of the rising sun to the symbol of the lotus flower, which means rebirth and enlightenment and ascension, is telling us something. The, the Mandela effect of the B-movie turning into... Um, uh, the whole movie is about breaking out of the hive mind. It's giving us a signal. We're finding also that a lot of uh, a lot of Mandela effects are taking words and going from singular. I mean, going from plural to singular. So we're going from a plural state, a duality state, to a singular state. So I wanted to bring that up too as well because I found some more stuff. Is it? Okay, so um, the chips, Cheez Its, oh, chips, they're crackers, excuse me, guys. So, Cheez Its, I remember with the ITZ, 
some people remember with an ITS. And this, um, I can find actual residual of both ITZ and ITS. I don't remember ITS. I remember cheeses being spelled with the ITZ. Here's some other residual that I found with Cheez Its. It's like a, from the Sea Like Disease Foundation. I guess they're doing um, a recipe. So when you do a recipe, I would suppose you would get the name of the ingredients, right? <laughs> I would suppose so. So if I put Cheez Its into Google, what we get now is just cheese it just one you only get one cheese it guys one cracker one cheese it <laughs> so uh not cheese it's a duality or plural only one and i'm finding that a lot of things are like this we're having a lot of uh things going into singular i'm gonna pull some notes real quick if y'all don't mind because i don't like to remember everything I gotta put everything on top of mine. I like to write things down and save it to heart. Okay, so several things that have gone from plural, a couple of things have gone from plural to singular. Uh, Bragg's apple cider vinegar is now Bragg. Cheeses to cheese. I did a video about the pins, uh, the uh, undergarments for the elderly, and it's now depend. It's Sally Fields to Sally Field. Um, so as we're seeing, there's a singular thing going on is everything is kind of going from duality or plural to singular. So it made me want to Google singularity. So I went ahead and Google clip up for you guys to see. My phone is doing stuff by itself now. Let's see if I can zoom in into this. Okay. Google, I did not say anything to you. See, Google's listening to me. Stop. All right, so I was looking up singularity, trying to get some ideas. And this more than once have I heard about the Mandela effect being caused by a black hole. So here it is. In the center of a black hole is a gravitational singularity, a one dimensional point, uh, which contains a huge mass in an infinitely small space where density and gravity become infinite and space time curves infinitely where the laws of physics as we know cease to operate the laws of physics cease to operate and an, em an eminent american physicist kip thorne describes it as the point where all laws of physics break down isn't that kind of what we're going through right now guys the laws of physics are breaking down things aren't making sense current theory suggests that as an object falls into a black hole and approaches the singularity at the center, it will become stretched out or spaghettified due to the increasing di differential in gravitational attraction on different parts of it before presumably losing dimensional com completely and, dis and disappearing irrevocably into singularity. Okay, so nobody's really been into a black hole, so we can't really say for sure what would happen. Maybe this is what's happening. Um, a lot of people say that CERN was experimenting with black holes. Actually, CERN has said they were experimenting with black holes. Um, that's not even uh, guessing. They have said they were experimenting with black holes. The existence of a singularity is often taken as proof that the theory of general relativity has broken down, which is perhaps not ex unexpected as it occurs in conditions where quantum effects should become important. It is inconceivable that some future combined theory of quantum gravity, blah, 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 is getting a little deep into quantum theory, and that can get very scary. The whole point is if something goes into a black hole, singularity can occur, and that can make the laws of physics and things that we believe to be true not be true. We've never gone into a black hole. We've never experimented with that, so we don't know what could actually happen. It could be very possible that our existence is been sucked into a black hole and because of that our reality is experiencing singularity at the at this time like our reality is converging on itself reality upon reality upon reality things that we thought were true or not true people that we thought were dead are dying again and again and again so 
there's a lot going on. So I just want to put that singularity thing out there. Oh, here's another one. And for the longest, you know, we have, I don't know, you guys have a Kroger or Kroger's next to you. This is one I found. And I, for the longest, I was like, you know, I truly believe when I first saw Kroger as a grocery store, I said something like, what? And I, I decided to find residual and I keep finding residual residual over other people really old residual 1976 uh, people talking about Kroger's and that's what I remember it as as a kid is Kroger's and I also remember Kroger's was going out of business here's a woman she's talking about an article about uh, oops excuse me I got a little gas there Kroger's the grocery store Ooh, what am I doing I'm just moving everything around. Sorry, guys. I'm going to move myself out the way. So right here, it says Kroger's. Let me try to see if I can click off of this. Bloop. Uh, this is an article about some guy getting arrested by Kroger's on East Stone. And this is the article about physics. I'm just keeping a Mandela folder right now. Oh. Wait, wait, go back. Let me get out the way. Uh, National Salvation Army, they were just talking about they were doing an event at Kmart today and Kroger's on Wednesday. So all of this thing kind of gets me to the point where I was like, yeah, what I remember is pretty much true. I remember Kroger's. I don't remember Kroger. Now there's a Kroger just without an S, but it's also an example of things going from plural to singular. Uh, if you guys have some more examples of Mandela effects where you see that it used to be plural, but now it's singular, you guys hit me up because this is the pattern that I'm seeing. And this is what I'd like to do is find patterns and things and see why it is. But I really think it has something to do with singularity. I think there's an intelligent force trying to tell us something about the Mandela effect. Like I said, I'm just keeping articles, clips and everything, because the more that we research these things, uh, the powers that be, they're watching, and I think they're deleting stuff off of the internet. Uh, they're, they're, they are deleting stuff off the archive or redirecting people off of that. So print stuff out, people, please. Um, there is some old um, residual that I recorded back in the past, a couple of years ago, that I can't even find today. You know, I used to find a bunch of stuff about sex in the city. Uh, can't find anything now. Barely can find anything online anymore. It's all been scrubbed. So, guys, make sure you do take pictures, screenshots, videos. Uh, print shit out. Um, don't rely on digital copies anymore because powers that be are really getting rid of stuff. So they don't want people to know. All right, guys, stay blessed. Make something happen because if you don't do it, then who will? Peace out.